Welcome back. Today we are making classic chocolate chip cookies, but with a simply golden twist, of course, I am making these cookies for my nieces. So I want something simple and easy that they're familiar with, but I also want something that's beautiful. So we are gonna dip these cookies in melted chocolate and then add some sprinkles on top. That way when my nieces open up their package in the mail, they're gonna be greeted with these adorable cookies. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and get started. You guys know that I like to sip together my dry ingredients first. So I'm gonna sip together some flour, some salt, some baking powder, as well as baking soda. It's a simple step that so many people like to skip over, but trust me, it makes a huge difference in your final product. You want your dry ingredients to aerate. You also want them to combine really well, which means you gotta get rid of all of the lumps and bumps that hang around inside of flour and baking powder and baking soda. So as you can see, Sometimes you end up with these little lumps in there and you just wanna take the back of a fork or a spoon and break them apart so that way they don't end up in your final cookie. See, that was really easy, really simple. We are done already. Go ahead and sit your dry mix to the side. It's time to cream together our butter and our sugars. I personally think some of the best cookies are made with brown sugar. So we're actually gonna do a 50-50 split. I have one cup of brown sugar. I'm also gonna use one cup of granulated white sugar. Grab your electric hand mixer and go ahead and whisk all of this together until it's creamed, it's nice, and it's fluffy. All right, my butter and sugar mixture looks great to me. I'm gonna go ahead and add in two eggs, one at a time, and I'm gonna continuously beat until again, everything is nice and fluffy. This is probably the funnest part of baking for me. I love watching all of the ingredients slowly start to come together. It's like this anticipation builds up for what's to come. I don't, I don't know, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's not, but it's literally my favorite part. All right, the last thing we need to do for our wet ingredients is to add in some vanilla extract. I'm actually using a new vanilla extract this time. I've never used pure bourbon, so we're gonna see how this comes out. Mm, it smells delicious though, so I'm pretty confident. Take the hand mixer, put it to the side, grab yourself a spatula, cause that's what we'll be using from here on out and your dry mix. Dump in about half of the mix to your creamed butter and sugar, and then gently combine it using your spatula. That way you don't get ingredients flying all over your kitchen. Take it and gently just start to fold it together until it forms that beautiful cookie dough that we're looking for. Do not over mix your batter. I tell this to people all the time. You ruin the texture of any baked good when you over mix. You just wanna mix it until it's well combined, then you stop. It's coming together nicely. Last half, in we go. Now, this is a little trick that I use. We still have to add in the chocolate chips, right? So I do not mix the batter all the way until it's combined. I stop just before it's combined. That way, I still get to fold in the chocolate chips without over mixing my batter. Now, this is my niece's favorite ingredient, two cups of chocolate chips going into these cookies. These cookies are gonna be bursting with chocolate. They're gonna be so good. Perfect for my young nieces. They love chocolate, they love sweets. I made some chocolate brownies for the holidays. When I say my nieces inhale those brownies, they are gonna love these cookies. Go ahead and fold in your chocolate chips. Again, don't over mix your batter. Just fold it until all of those chocolate chips are nice and evenly distributed. Sometimes I forget how much upper body strength is required to mix cookie dough. All right, let's get scooping. I have my jumbo cookie scoop here all ready to go. I've got my baking sheet lined with parchment paper. I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. 
So I'm gonna start scooping these cookies, placing them about two inches, one and a half to two inches apart. You just wanna make sure you give them room to spread or else they'll stick together while they're baking. And we want those beautiful circles. So I like to give my cookies plenty of, sp of space. Okay, so this almost never happens, but my last cookie is actually the right size. Normally I end up with like a half cookie or three fourths of a cookie. So for this particular recipe, I was able to make 16 jumbo cookies, perfect amount for my nieces because I have six of them who all live in one household plus their parents. That means each of them are gonna be able to get two cookies. Mwah, I am so excited right now. Okay, these are gonna go in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 10 to 12 minutes. I usually leave my cookies in for exactly 12 minutes, but we'll see how this recipe goes. Before I pop them in the oven though, I take the back of a measuring spoon, or measuring cup, excuse me, and I push down the tops of the cookies. That helps them cook into that perfect round circle that we love when we see cookies, right? So just give it a little bit of a push to flatten out the top and then pop them inside the oven. The tops are flat, so these are ready to go inside of the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 10 to 12 minutes, we'll see. Timer just went off, let's grab the cookies out of the oven. So these cookies may still look a little soft in the center, but trust me, check out the edges. If they're browned, they're ready. Sit them down, let them cool for about five minutes, and then transfer them to a wire rack. While they're cooling, we are gonna make our chocolate coating. I already have some white chocolate that's been melted and ready to go. I'm also gonna use some milk chocolate for these cookies as well. I just like variety. Visually, you'll see a combination of white chocolate and sprinkles, uh, milk chocolate and sprinkles. It's gonna be beautiful. I really hope some of you guys make these delicious cookies with little ones. If you do, let me know how they turn out. I gotta finish adding the chocolate and sprinkles to the rest of these cookies, but until next time, cheers.